Hi, welcome back to INF 313, Introduction to Computational Reasoning. Uh, the name of today's session is Introduction to Our Tech Stack, and that's what it's about. So why don't we hop right in? So what we'll talk about in this session is the tools that we'll use uh, during the course. These will both be the technical tools, the platforms, the programs, uh, languages, and so on. Um, we can hope to expect to learn uh, which tools they are, what we'll use them for, where you can get them, and uh, how will we learn how to use them. But before we start, we should ask ourselves, what is a technology stack? Uh, it's a term of art uh, that typically refers to the set of tools that are used in a given project, or sometimes the set of tools that a person has command of. So you may have seen uh, uh, an ad, for example, looking for a full stack developer describing the, the fact that uh, the developer knows how to work with stuff on the front end and the back end of, uh, of web development. The stack for this course will consist of four books, three languages, two platforms, and one program or application. The books are Computer Science Distilled, Eloquent JavaScript, Computational Thinking, and Machine Learning for Humans. Uh, all of these should be available in digital form, uh, or you could um, order them in hard copy as well. The, two, the three languages that we'll use are CSS, or Cascading Style Sheets, HTML, Hypertext Markup Language, and JavaScript. The platforms are Quercus, which I think you're familiar with, and GitHub. And the one program or application is called Brackets. Although the Work of the course is not by any means dominated by coding. Uh, when, we, when we are doing some coding exercises, this is what our workflow will look like. We'll write some code in the application Brackets, which is an editor, and there we'll be using CSS and JavaScript and HTML. Uh, Java, uh, Brackets provides an option for what we call live preview that lets us see the results of our work immediately uh, in the browser. Um, when we're satisfied and we've iterated and corrected and, and made things work, we'll store the files up on GitHub. And if we want to submit them so that the instructors or TAs can see them or we share them with our colleagues, we'll use GitHub to serve them uh, via a function called GitHub Pages. So you can see that there's a workflow that goes from your computer and browser up to GitHub and then back again. The editor we'll use for coding is called Brackets. Brackets is custom designed specifically for writing code uh, that's used in web design. Um, that is to say HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And I think you'll find it uh, very easy to learn, very easy to use. The first of the three languages that we'll learn uh, something of in this course is HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language. The hypertext part of the name refers to text in which some part of the text uh, links you to some other text. Uh, so you're very familiar with this in the way that one web page points to another. So for example, if we look up computational thinking in Wikipedia, um, you'll see the word problem solving. Uh, it's in blue with a, a underline, meaning it's a web link. We click on that, it takes us to the Wikipedia article on problem solving. And from there, we can jump to the Wikipedia article on artificial intelligence. And from there, we jump to the Wikipedia article on computer science. So, so this jumping from one text to another is, known, is what hypertext refers to. The M in HTML stands for markup. Markup comes from uh, the, the, the use of various symbols and tags uh, in plain text writing uh, to, tell a, uh, to tell a typesetter how things wanted to be formatted. So we have here uh, two documents. Um, one is uh, on, the, on the right uh, is the text for envelopes and business cards and such. Um, with uh, designers' instructions in terms of how these should be printed, 
uh, what font sizes, how much spacing here and there um, in different media, whether it's for a business card or an envelope or so on. Um, on the other side, we see listing for uh, advertisements in a telephone book. And again, the designer's uh, indications are there for what kind of text, how big, uh, and so You've probably all seen HTML before, but if not, here's an example. Um, we see here the first paragraph of one of those Wikipedia articles we saw earlier. Um, in HTML, the tags or the instructions for how the text should be displayed are included uh, between angle brackets, between the less than sign and greater than sign. Um, so we see here a tag at the top saying this is the beginning of a paragraph and a tag at the bottom saying it's the end of the paragraph. And then the hyperlinks, the things that take us from one page to another, um, are included, are, are surrounded by these anchor tags that begin with bracket A and end with bracket slash A bracket. So you can see the very second line there is the link uh, of the word education to a Wikipedia article on education. And problem solving in the next line down uh, will be a link to the Wikipedia article on problem solving. And now we come to CSS, the second language, cascading style sheets. The C in CSS stands for cascading. And the meaning of cascading is that I can have several style sheets and their effects will be cumulative. So if a third style sheet redefines a style that was defined in the first style sheet, the style that the page will feel the effect of will be the one in the third sheet. The S stands for style, which is referring to the look and the feel of a page. So when you look at a web page, you see what fonts are being used, how big are they, what color are they, and so on. And we call them sheets. That's really just a legacy characterization from the fact that it used to be the case that the style sheet for a newsroom or a magazine was literally something that was written down on a piece of paper. And here we see an example of some CSS. In here we have the element P for paragraph and the curly brackets surround the style instructions. Those instructions here say that the text should be read and it should be centered. And so down on the web page below that we see two things that are surrounded by the P tags. Hello world and these paragraphs are styled with CSS. And then over on the right we see what that web page would look like. Those two paragraphs are printed uh, in red and they're centered. Our third language is JavaScript. JavaScript is a programming language for web browsers. So every web browser can read and implement JavaScript and we're going to spend uh, most of the time when we have coding exercises writing code in JavaScript to make web pages do things. Here's a small example of a small piece of JavaScript in a web page. We see a tag button which creates a button on a page. And within that tag, uh, there are some instructions that say when the button is clicked, execute a bit of JavaScript. And that JavaScript says, find an element on the page that has the identifier demo and change the HTML between the tags on that element to say, hello, JavaScript. And so if I look above, I see there is a paragraph that has the identifier demo. And when I start the web page, it says JavaScript can change HTML content. And if I click on the button, what I'll see is the content of the web page will change to say, hello, JavaScript. Oh, and now we're at the two platforms that we'll use. One you're familiar with uh, is Quercus. Uh, our, our course materials are on Quercus. Um, you're probably using Quercus right now as you, as you view this video. Um, the other is, uh, is a thing called GitHub. Um, we'll hear a couple of terms in connection with this. One is a repository. And a repository is just a collection of all the files used for a given project. In our case, usually we'll have one repository for each assignment that we do. So each, each student will have an account on a platform called GitHub. And on that account, she will have any number of repositories, one for each assignment. And the thing that's behind all of this is, is a program called Git, which is what we call a version control system. It's a way of keeping track of the multiple versions 
of, uh, of code files that we typically have as we try things out, fix mistakes, add features, and so on. So Git is the version control system, GitHub is the platform, and repositories are things that you're going to have in your GitHub account. And finally, we come to the four books we'll use in the course. The, the first book is uh, Computer Science Distilled, and we'll, we'll, call, we'll refer to this a lot of times as The Green Book. Um, I came across this book about a year or two ago and, and was quite fascinated by the fact that the, the author has really managed to do exactly what the title says and distill down into just a hundred and some pages um, pretty much all the greatest conceptual hits of computer science. Um, so we'll use it as, as a bit of a kind of a guidebook um, uh, to, to the things that we, we want to um, put into our toolkit from, from computer science. The second book, um, which we'll sometimes call the yellow book, uh, is Eloquent JavaScript. Um, this is a, is, a, is a book on learning to program in JavaScript, and it's, it's far more JavaScript than we will actually um, have time to learn in this course. Um, but I think it'll be very useful to you uh, in the sense that it's 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 a it's a very smart uh, introduction to the ideas of JavaScript. It's there's it's it doesn't um, sugarcoat things, but it does explain them very very clearly. Um, and the nice thing about it is uh, it will it will let you go as far as you want uh, in developing your JavaScript skills. We we will kind of only scratch the surface. Um, but this book will, will be there and, and let you go as far as you really want to go. The other nice thing about it is it's got uh, the full text of the book is available uh, in a digital version, which is uh, available online for free, although you can, you can make a donation if you think it's valuable to you. Um, and that online version contains inline code examples where you can, you can try out the code right in the middle of reading the book. Uh, it's fully interactive. Um, really a marvelous, marvelous resource. The third book is called Machine Learning for Humans. Um, this, uh, you, can, you can read this online as a series of blog posts or you can download the PDF. Both of them are free. Very, very readable uh, introduction to the big ideas in machine learning and AI. Um, the nice thing about this book is it's incredibly accessible, but it doesn't uh, water stuff down. It, it, it really does uh, explain stuff from the cutting edge. So you'll really have a good sense of what's going on out there. And it'll position us nicely to do some of the uh, hands-on exercise that we do at the end with TensorFlow. Uh, finally, uh, Peter Denning's book, uh, Computational Thinking, just came out last year. Um, it's more of a history philosophy uh, book, uh, kind of runs through the ideas associated with computational reasoning, uh, delves into their history, um, connects to and tells a bit of the story of how computational thinking has developed and evolved, um, not just surprisingly over the last 50 years, um, but really over the last many hundreds of years. Uh, and it's, again, it's a nice short readable book that I think will be a nice supplement to the others here. And that's it for our tech stack. I hope that wasn't too dry a litany of one thing after another after another. Um, our next session uh, will be about uh, how to get started. So it will be a, a sort of practical guide, guidance into getting uh, brackets loaded on your computer, uh, setting up a GitHub account, uh, what you should start reading, what our first exercises will be, and so on and so forth. Uh, we'll see you then.